Welcome to this lesson on outcomes and probability. An outcome is a possible result of an event or experiment. A sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. For example, the sample space of rolling a six-sided number cube would be all the numbers on a number cube, so one through six. And a sample space is a set, so you put it in brackets. Probability is the likelihood an event will occur. And probability can be written as a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. The symbol for probability is a P, and then in parentheses you put whatever event you're talking about, so the probability of A. Alright, so if you need more time to finish writing these definitions, pause the video now. Alright, let's try some examples. So find the probability of each. So rolling a 2 on a 6-sided number cube. Okay, so when you're finding probability, you want to put what you want to happen in the numerator and then the total possible outcomes in the denominator. So if I want a 2, think about a 6-sided number cube or a, a die, a dice. How many twos are on that number cube? There should just be one. So that goes in the numerator. And then in the denominator, you put how many total numbers there are. So on a six out of number cube, of course, there's six numbers. So the probability is one out of six. So you can leave it like that, or you can change it to a decimal by dividing one divided by six which gives you 1.6 repeating or about 1.7 or you can change that to a percent by moving the decimal two places to the right so about 17 percent or 16.7 percent however you want to round alright number two rolling an even number on a six-sided number cube alright so think about the even numbers there are 2, 4, and 6, so that's 3 even numbers out of 6 total numbers, so 3 out of 6. You always want to reduce, so that would be 1 half. As a decimal, that would be 0.5 or 50%. Number 3, flipping a fair coin and landing on heads. Alright, so only one side has heads. And there's two sides total, so one out of two. 0.5 or 50%. And then number four, selecting a green marble from a bag containing three red, four green, and five blue. Okay, so we want green. There are four greens. And then we want to put that over the total amount of marbles. So three plus four plus five is 12. And then that will reduce to one third. As a decimal, that's 0.3 repeating, so 0.33 or 33%. All right, next example. Lila is spinning a spinner with sections numbered 1 to 8 and recording the results. Event A is spinning an odd number. And event B is spinning a number greater than 2. So first of all, let's write out our events. Okay, so A is spinning an odd number. So that would be 1, 3, 5, and 7 because this spinner is numbered 1 through 8. And then event B is spinning a number greater than 2. So that would be 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight. All right, so draw a Venn diagram that shows the probability of each event. All right, so let's draw our two circles. So first, let's fill in the numbers like we did for set theory before we write, write the probability. Okay, so we'll start in the middle of the intersection. So that's the numbers that both sets have in common. That would be 3, 5, and 7. All right, and then I'm going to fill in what's left over. So 1 over here, 4, 6, and 8 over here. Now we are missing 2. That doesn't fall on either set, but it's still part of the, subs the universal set, so that goes out here. And that should be everything. So now that we have all the numbers listed, let's actually find the probability of each. So the probability of this section here. So let's count the total first. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's only one number in this section, so the probability would be one eighth. In the middle, we have three numbers. So let me get a different color here. Here we have three numbers out of eight, so the probability would be three eighths. I'm going to come out here because I don't have room. All right, and then in this section, again, I have three eighths. And then outside in the universal set, I just have one number, so that would be one eighth. And you can check and make sure you did this right because all the fractions should add up to a probability of one, 100%. So one eighth plus three eighths plus three eighths plus one eighth, that would be eight eighths, which equals one. So we did that correctly. All right, let's continue on. Next, we want to talk about a tree diagram. A tree diagram is a way to find the total possible number of outcomes of more than one event. So here's an example. Miguel is going to select an outfit from two different t-shirts, tan and red, two different pairs of shorts, gray and khaki, and three pairs of socks, black, navy, and white. We want to draw a tree diagram to represent all the possible outfits that he can make. So let's start with our t-shirts, tan and red. I'm just going to use T and R. And then I'm going to draw branches off of those. That's why it's called a tree diagram. So off of each one, I'm going to draw two branches for the two colors of shorts, gray and khaki. And then off of each one of those, I'm going to draw three branches for the three colors of socks. Now it might be hard to write all these. Just fit it in the best you can. There we go. All right, so let's list out the possible outfits using this tree diagram. So here's how you read the tree diagram once you have it drawn. So one possible outfit would be a tan shirt, gray shorts, and black socks, so T, G, B. Or I could have a tan, gray, and navy. Or tan, gray, and white. And then you just continue on. So I could have tan, khaki, and black socks. Tan, khaki, and navy. Tan, khaki, and white. It's just a way to organize your information. Then I could have red, gray, black. Red, gray, navy. Red, gray, white. And then red khaki black, red khaki navy, and red khaki white. So the total possible outcomes in the sample space, you could count. You can count what we wrote over here, or you can count, let me redraw these. You can count the last column over here, that would be 12. So there's 12 possible outfits that he can make with these different um, 
shirts, shorts, and socks. So number two, what is the probability that Miguel will select a tan shirt, gray shorts, and black socks? So I'm gonna look at what I have written over here in pink. There's just one outfit with tan, gray, and black, so that would be one out of 12. And of course we can change that to a decimal or a percent if we want. As a decimal, that would be 0.08 or about 8%. There's an 8% chance that he's gonna choose that outfit. What is the probability that Miguel will select an outfit with a red shirt and gray shorts? So how many have red with gray shorts? That would be all of these. So three out of 12, which would be one fourth or 0.25 or 25%. All right, and then what is the probability that Miguel will select an outfit with khaki shorts? That would be all of these. So six out of 12 or one half, 0 0.5, 50%. All right, last thing in this lesson is called the fundamental counting principle. And this is another way to find the total possible number of outcomes, especially when there are a large number of them. So here is an example. A deli is doing inventory of their sandwich ingredients. They have six different types of bread, eight types of meat, and four types of cheese. How many different types of sandwiches could they make? So a couple of things. We don't know the types of bread and the types of meat and the types of cheese. So we can't make a tree diagram. We don't know that there's rye and white and wheat. We just know that there's six different types. So the only thing we can do here is find the number of outcomes, but we can't find specific probabilities of spe specific types of bread, meat, or cheese. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply the number of types of bread times the number of types of meat times the number of types of cheese. So six times eight times four, and that gives me 192. So there's 192 different types of sandwiches that this deli can make. All right, go ahead and stop the video now and complete the practice.